Hey too, this is Jaden Storm coming at you guys from Team Shadow Strike, and I have an informative discussion, whatever the what kind of label you want to put on this. I put discussion video, but really what this is one this is one of those uh, tips I think every Vanguard player should know. And it's something that it reminded me at my locals. I saw one of the guys at my locals. They made this mistake, even though I've preached to him countless times. I'm not going to say his name, you know. And I've told many people this, um, <clears throat> and I and it's something that I think every Vanguard player needs to be aware of because it really seriously damages their chances of winning. Now, <clears throat> the one advantage that we have in Vanguard is the second you begin the game. Like if you play someone at your locals, you might associate them with a certain clan or two, and that way when you sit down with them, I mean, because here's the way it's done at my locals. Like I've I've um, done matches of my of me at my locals, and I've filmed my matches during a tournament and things like that. Um, the way it works is we um, the head of my <clears throat> shop he has this computer he types in everyone's name who's in the tournament and then he ps shoots out a random piece of paper and he'll say on the uh loudspeaker and i'm pretty sure you guys have been able to hear it sometime when i do the jade and zane thing where he'll say uh vanguard round one pairings are up Yu-Gi-Oh, round three pairings are up you know you know that way we know okay we need to go up to the counter find the piece of paper that has vanguard written on it and then you can scroll down there and i'll see okay Jaden versus uh kyle that's the name of the one of the people at my locals um don't know why i said kyle it was just the first one that popped into my mind but um okay so then we go find a spot we sit we play our two matches at the end the winner goes up to the counter and they take a highlighter that's next to the piece of paper and you highlight your name if you won the match and then he will enter who won the first round, and he'll put that in the computer, and then he'll shoot out the next round, and it will go on and on and on and on. <clears throat> and this, you know, and then after that, you know, even though I, I, I know how to play Vanguard, I feel very well. Like, if I had to, I guess, rate myself... Uh, I'd say, you know, and not meaning this in an egotistical way, um, I think it's fair to say that um, I would consider myself an expert player in Vanguard. Um, I think I'm a better Vanguard player um, overall in Yu-Gi-Oh! I think I was a lot better Yu-Gi-Oh! player when I was younger because it was what I loved to play. And then when I came across Vanguard, you know, if there's a Yu-Gi-Oh! player in the, who's watching this, please, uh, you know, like, say something in the comment section you agree with this. I was a much better Yu-Gi-Oh! player when it was the only game in my life because, and by that, I by the only game in my life, I don't mean literally the only thing in my life, like the main card game choice in my life, because I focused on doing well. Now, like, when I play Yu-Gi-Oh!, I focus to win, but I do not study the game anymore as much as I do Vanguard. I mean, I, I have a general idea of knowing how every deck works, how every card do, what every card does, and occasionally, I won't even have to read cards anymore. It just gets to the point where I have such a great memory because I, I did drama, guys, in high school. And you have to memorize lines and 10-minute speeches to your head to just, you know, get through it. So things like memorizing a card is nothing to me. I can read a card one time and go, okay, I never need to read it again. I may not be able to recite it to you verbatim, but I know I know basically what the card does. I'll just have to check the wording just to make sure that I know everything correct. And here's the thing that spurned this video. I kind of got off topic there for a second, and I apologize. But the thing that is frustrating me, and the thing even when I watch matches online, because occasionally when I'm bored, I'll watch people online to see if they make a mistake, and then I can spurn a video out of that. But <clears throat> here's something that I caught at my locals, and I caught a couple of people you know, online from matches I've watched, and it's hand advantage guys i don't understand why hand advantage is so hard to understand in Yu-Gi-Oh, hand advantage on a scale of one to ten as far as how important it is it's probably about a seven to an eight um and on a scale of one to ten in vanguard it's about a fucking 15 um hand advantage in vanguard is it goes like this you have a hand you're protecting your vanguard which means you're not losing if you don't have a hand it means your vanguard is getting hit which means you are either dead or you soon soon will be now now there's um someone i'm not going to name names i saw a someone on my twitter and they said 
Well, now we won't have to worry about our hand advantage so much, so much anymore because once set 14 comes and Ezel comes along, Chaos Breaker's dead. He's not going to be anywhere in the format. These All, all these control decks, they're running amok. They're not going to be around anymore. Uh, hello? What is Dominant Dauntless? Dominant Dauntless is control. That's all he does. It's... Um, and for those people like this guy on Twitter who said this, that's Chaos Breaker is going to be, and I quote, non-existent after set 14, <laughs> uh, reality check, guys, Chaos Breaker is not going anywhere, okay? The only way this deck is, is hurt is by, is by, um, Platina Ezel. I mean, not Platina Ezel, uh, Grand Ezel Scissors. I like Monarch Alfred for a completely different reason that it has the unlock. Fuck the ability that Monarch Alfred has and the card Monarch Alfred. Ezel's the tits when it comes to the card that looks at Link Joker and just goes, uh, you mad bro? Uh, because, let's face it guys, all Grand Ezel Scissors is, it's basically a supercharged Ezel plus the ability to stun Link Joker. That still's not going to hurt um, the Ezel Scissor deck at all. I have played online a little bit. People have been asking me, do I have card fight or anything like that? I don't necessarily like that because it put a virus on my last laptop and I had to buy a new one and it really pissed me off. You know, but <clears throat> here is here's my point. I can still beat you if you're playing Grand Ezel Scissors with Link Joker. You know how? You don't break ride Chaos Breaker. You just continue to break ride the break ride until your opponent has flipped over all their damage or to the point where they've exhausted their soul because eventually it runs out. True, you have the cards that's the grade one line that lets you troll soul charge. True, it get Grand Ezel soul charges himself. And true, you're already going to have anywhere from zero to three cards in the soul because of your previous rides, but it does run out. And also, it's still a great boost. And eventually, your opponent is going to run out of perfect guards to nullify attacks, and they're going to have to start get going from two to pass, from two to pass straight from their hand, or what I call two to pass while using your hand and your field, and then they're going to have to go to one to pass. And when my opponent is at four or five damage and they're guarding for just one to pass, you may as well not even guard at all. Now, there are times when you have to guard for one to pass because simply that's all you can afford. And there are times, guys, when, you, when I'm in tournaments where I'm being attacked and I'm at four damage and I see, okay, <clears throat> this attack is somewhere in the high 20s. I'm at 11. I can win if I get to my turn. But I cannot drop this perfect guard. Because if I drop this perfect guard, I'm going to drop my boss monster. Because in this one situation, I was sitting on infinite zero. My opponent had two cards in hand after he flooded his field to try and finish me this turn. And he picked the right time to do it. But in my hand, I have a perfect guard, two grade zeros... <clears throat> Two grade zeros, well, no, wait, three grade zeros, two of which are 10Ks, the other which is a 5K, and a perfect guard with a um, Chaos Breaker in my hand. You know, and I'm looking at myself like this. I can nullify this attack, but he is going to get at least two drive checks out of this, and he's only at four damage. And I know he had a, per and I knew one of those last two cards in his hand was a perfect guard. So obviously, if I drop. You know, my perfect guard next turn, he's going to nullify my perfect guard attack no matter what I do. Even if it was just swing with infinite zero again, he's, he would have nullified the attack. And then he would have had at least another two cards in his hand to guard the one that I put all the triggers on. And he would have been able to take another damage. So he would have had options. <clears throat> so, here's what I did. He attacked um, my vanguard, and I let him through. And I'm like, if I have to use this perfect guard, I can use it to protect it against one of his rear guards. If I have to. And if he hits a critical, oh well. You know, sometimes you have to do that. Well, he does, he does his twin drive, and he hit two triggers, but neither one of them were crits. He hit a draw, and I think he hit a draw and a heal. Okay, well, I'm at, I'm at four damage. At, no, wait, he hit two draw triggers. That's what it was. He hit two draw triggers, which was kind of a bummer. But fortunately for me, apparently he drew both grade threes. 
And sometimes that's just how it is. Because then, my following turn, Break Ride Chaos Breaker, lock two of your rear guards, use Chaos Breaker skill and Unicorn to lock two more. So I've, lived in, I've given you one rear guard left, none of which is going to boost your Vanguard. So your Vanguard is going to be all alone next turn. And then the following turn, he does nullify the attack, but <laughs> there goes his field. The next turn, he drops all four cards in his hand, by which now I'm up to ten cards in my hand, thanks to Chaos Breaker's attack, and hitting a draw trigger on the twin drive that he did nullify when I swung at his Vanguard when his field was locked down, and he had no other options. That is why, guys, Chaos Breaker is not going away. Just because Plat- uh, gr I still- I keep wanting to call Ezel Scissors Platinum. Even though Ezel is in the format, and he's gonna be a threat, that doesn't mean Chaos Breaker goes away, because the only thing that stops him is Ezel. And when <clears throat> 15 rolls around, the only two things that stop him are Monarch and Ezel. So it may not be a good option at your locals if everyone and their dog is going to be building these two decks to play Link Joker decks. But if you are going to go to a major event of people that you don't know what they play, you could probably still play Link Joker and do very well. Because if you're sitting down with somebody and playing them for the first time, what are the odds that they're going to be playing two different those one of those two decks? I mean, true, there are a lot of decks out there, guys. I mean, we could sit here and I could ramble on for the next hour about the decks that are out there, but Chaos Breaker's going nowhere, guys. Chaos Breaker's going to go down a little bit because he's no longer going to be the main thing, but he's still going to be one of the best decks to be there. Guys, when Set 17 comes out, and the new trial deck for Link Joker comes out, Chaos Breaker comes back not, you know, halfway. He comes back with a vengeance. He's like, okay, now I got a grade 2 that I'm going to take out my 10Ks for. And yeah, he's only 9,000 power, but if you have a locked unit, I just simply drop him and I lock something. That is stupid. Guys, that is unheard of. I have already said this before, and, you know, and it makes me wonder. It's like, do people even research Vanguard before they even just start talking? Oh, Chaos Breaker, once set 14 comes along, he's just going to go away. Hand advantage is no longer going to be an important thing in the game anymore. Guys, hand advantage in this game is always going to be very important. With Break Rides and Legion, hitting 20k is... it's It doesn't even matter anymore. You hit 20k almost every single turn now, just off your Vanguard skills, you know, so it doesn't really mean anything to hit 20. It doesn't even really much to hit the high 20s or low 30s anymore, guys. You can hit it so easy, just off skills alone. Limit breaks, um, skills that gain power. I mean, there's really nothing here. And then when Legion comes out, the second you start your turn and you're in Legion, your Vanguard automatically jumps to 20k. So, I mean, there's really no downside here, you know. <clears throat> I really don't understand why people have have so much uh, who, who, how, who, blah, 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 blah. I do not understand why people don't understand how important hand advantage in this game is. If you have hand, that means you can protect yourself. That means you can protect yourself. You have cards to replenish your field where, when your opponent picks off your rear guards. And, God, guys, I apologize. And you're all, if you're playing against someone who's smart, they're going to be picking off your rear guards too. When I fight someone and their only thing is attack the vanguard, 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 attack the vanguard I'm thinking in the back of my head, uh, thanks. <laughs> you know, because I can sit there and protect my vanguard all day. You know, it's replenishing my field while having to guard next turn is a problem. Um, I think I mentioned that in one of my... Uh, how to be a better Vanguard player videos or whatever the hell I called it. People who strictly just zero in on the Vanguard is not good. Now when you're going for the kill, yes. But hand advantage, guys, is crucial in this game. I... I really don't know how to put it any more simple than if you have a hand, you're still in the game. If you don't have a hand, you're dead or soon going to be. Um, <clears throat> so these cards like Chaos Breaker and Link Joker in general, who for some reason people associate with with just being able to eat away at a hand, and they do, but they're not going anywhere. Link Joker is always going to be a thing. Link Joker is kind of getting the Kagro treatment, and it's because Link Joker makes money for Bush Road. Kagro is one of those clans, like, back when Gold Paladin first came out, people were complaining that Gold Paladin 
was getting so much support that it wasn't even fair, and that is a just argument. First they got Garmor, then they got Ezel, then they got Platinum Ezel, then they got Liberators, and you know, it just it just seemed like they just continually just got pushed more and more and more support, while some other clans, they were just like, hey, Grand Blue, we're over here, we're not getting shit. Hey, we're Tachikaze, we got something in Set 11, but since then, we haven't gotten shit. Hey, we're Dark Irregulars. We got a minimal stuff in Set 12. We ain't getting anything. Or, hey, we're Great Nature. You, I mean, you see what I'm saying? I mean, people were legitimately mad about this, and I can understand why, you know. But, guys, I can't stress to you enough. Um, another thing that annoys me. Do not drop 15k for rear guards unless you need them for next turn because you're making a push. I have seen people in tournaments while I'm playing them, and even at Houston, one guy did this. I had my Vanguard column, a full rear guard column, and then I had a 10k column. And my first attack, I attacked 10 to his 10 rear guard. Okay? And he dropped a 10k point shield to guard it. When only he needed five. Well, now he may have had a grade one or two that he could have used to guard it. He just didn't want to drop those cards, so he dropped a 10k shield to guard it. Then my vanguard to his vanguard. I remember I hit a trigger on this and gave the power to my rear guard, and then I didn't want to put him at limit break yet, so I attacked his rear guard for 24 to his nine. This guy proceeds to drop 20k to guard this. And it's like, I don't understand this. It, why are you dropping 20,000 points of shield out of your hand to protect a rear guard when the very next turn he lets it die easily? You know, because he could have held on to those two 10Ks and then used them the following turn and may have been able to survive a turn more. I know this is complete. It depends on the situation. It is something that is completely situational. But guys, I can't stress to you enough how important hand advantage is in this game. You know, I see people all the time on matches online or at my locals, and they're not paying attention to the size of their hand. You know, if there is, if if you're in your opponent's hands or anywhere between three and five cards between each other, you're fine because you're gonna more times than not drop four cards every turn between you and your opponent's turns whether you are calling cards out of your hand or you are using cards to guard with you're going to drop anywhere from three three to four to five cards at usual this is just a average but if say you have three cards in your hand and your opponent has 15 you're in trouble that means you are a you just got chaos breaker Two, you are guarding your rear guards way too much. Or three, you might want to add some more draw triggers to your deck. Guys, remember, draw triggers are good for the deck. They, it's basically a free plus one. Um, plus ones are plus ones are good. Um, the main reason that Chaos Breaker is so good is the ability for him to plus hard. You know, that's why it, you know people they get so they get so riot acted about how broke Chaos Breaker Dragon is, and he is. Because when you minus four, I plus four. So technically I'm plusing eight, you know, because you're minusing four and I'm adding four, negative four plus four. You know, that, that's an eight card gap, you know. So, <laughs> so I mean, th there, there's a huge difference here, guys. You, It's essentially an eight card gap, considering I, your opponent has to get four cards to catch up to where they once were, and there's still four back, you know. So... That's why Chaos Breaker is so good, because he allows the player to be more reckless with their hand. People who don't have access to Chaos Breaker Dragon, they truly don't understand how sometimes how crucial their hand size is. And I don't I I may have not said that the best way, and I didn't mean for it to come off insulting. If it if it did, and it may have, and if it did, I really apologize. You know, but I don't understand how people can just Go, who can who can just think well I can drop 15k for this rear guard and then nullify my opponent's vanguard attack and then drop another 15 for the other rear guard that right there guys was anywhere between six seven eight cards you know and you can't continuously drop that many cards out of your hand 
because you'll lose rather quickly. Now, again, this is all situational. It depends on what situation am I in. Am I having to do this to survive? If you are having to do it to survive the game, by all means, do it. You know, me, I'm the kind of guy that if I'm at four damage and I need um, to say, and I need to be able to get to my turn without my opponent critting me, even though I have that perfect guard, I'll sometimes just say, you know what? No guard on their Vanguard attack and hope they don't crit because I know that if they do crit, I'm going to lose. And if I nullify it and they crit anyway, I'm still going to lose. You know, so sometimes it's better, you know, to take those risks. But, guys, I cannot stress enough. If you are playing the game and you want to win more, if you pay attention to how many cards am I dumping a turn? How many cards am I regaining? If you're playing a deck that regenerates hand advantage really quickly, like a Genesis deck, like an Oracle Think Tank deck, like a Chaos Breaker deck, you can be a little more frivolous with your hand. But if you're playing something like Liberators or Kagero or Beast Deities, something that doesn't have... A, a replenish engine to the hand, you need to be able to be cognizant of what you are doing with those cards. If you aren't, it can sneak up and bite you. And half the time, you'll lose the game simply because you are overspending for your rear guards. Sometimes, guys, even though you really want those 12k attackers or those key rear guards, it is better to just let them die than to continually having to drop 10k every turn to protect them if you can't afford to. It's just a healthy piece of advice. I hope you got. I hope this video um, helped you guys. I hope it will keep you uh, cognizant of the next time you play or sit down to play a tournament that you keep in mind how many cards that you are spending. If you notice your your hand si your hand size is dwindling fast, then you need to start thinking. Should I just let this attack go? I mean, before before you guard every attack, I need you, you do this. Ask yourself, is the game reliant on this card? Is this card really important next turn? Do I really need it? Should I? Is this a smart move? Keep in mind that your opponent is going to be doing the same thing if they're a good player. You should also be able to have some idea what your opponent's plan is. This is why I've told you guys to... Sometimes it's a, it's a good idea to at least have some minimal knowledge of what every clan does, so that way you can maybe halfway expect what's going to happen. Um, you should al also keep in mind, as long as your your uh, rear guards and vanguards are hitting the magic number on every attack, you're fine. Now, if you're asking yourself, what's the magic number? For example, on a 10k if you're if you're going to attack a 10k attack a 10,000 power target, as long as you're hitting the magic number, which in that case is 15, you're fine. By that, if a 15,000 power rear guard or vanguard attacks a 10,000 point target, that means they have to drop 10k to at least start guarding it. 10k would be either, if it was a 15k rear guard attacking a 10k rear guard, then that's at least no pass. But if a 15k is attacking a 10k vanguard, that's at least enough to guard it without triggers. And then, same thing with rear guards. If you're attacking a 9k target, you need to be able to hit at least 14. If you're able to hit a magic number above it, all you have to do to figure out what a card's magic number is, is look at that card's power and add 5k to it. So if it's a 9k attack target, it its magic number is 14. If it's 10, it's 15. 11, it's 16. If it's a cross ride, it's 18. That's all you have to do. As long as you are hitting 5,000 above each thing's attack target, you are making them drop 10,000 points of shield, which should be your goal with every attack, if possible. If you can't, having them drop a 5k is still good. It means it's more cards out of their hand. This is just the number one way that I think every Vanguard player can get better, and I wanted to do a video on it. So if you have any more questions about the magic number system or uh, hand advantage, just feel free to ask me about it. Um, I do recommend, I do not like 12 crit decks because there's no drawing in it unless there's a deck, unless you can consider the cards in hand. I think decks that don't play draw cards have less of winning. Because there's no free pluses floating around in the deck. I like hitting draw triggers. Because it adds card advantage to my hand. 
I play six draw triggers in my Chaos Breaker deck because I like to have a hand all game before Chaos Breaker's effect. And then when I do get Chaos Breaker's effect off, I have 15 cards in my hand while you maybe have three. And that is a huge gap and makes my opponent literally go, this is my opponent, this is me. <laughs> you know, I I did I pulled the John Cena and I hate John Cena. Um, you know, having a huge hand against your opponent is the easiest way to beat them. Is because they literally run out of options. That's why Vanguard's hand advantage on this in this game on a scale of one to ten it is a fifteen, and it's because of the simple fact being your opponent is literally going to run out of options, or you're going to run out of options if you're not if you are not watching how many cards you're spending every turn. So this is my number one tip to you. The next time you play a game, keep an eye on your hand. If you notice you're spending too much, you might need to rethink a couple of your guarding strategies. If you guys would like me to maybe do a video on this where I actually use cards and maybe share with you a couple of thoughts that I might be able to come up with, I'll try and do that in the future. But my best piece of advice I can give you guys is don't drop more than 10k to guard a rear guard unless unless you can make a giant push next turn because it's not worth it if to protect that rear guard even a silent tom <laughs> so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it helped you um so anyway i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching comment rate subscribe thumbs up this video for more videos and deck profiles and discussion videos to come um so i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see y'all later